Uh, this is Bill Peterson. I'm Senior Director of Industry Solutions for MapR. MapR is different and we're very proud of that. One of the things that we have done recently is we have uh, rebranded to a converged data platform, the industry, industry's first and only converged data platform. So you may be sitting there and go thinking, well, I always thought of MapR as a Hadoop vendor. And while we still have a Hadoop distribution and Hadoop and open source in general is a big part of what we're doing, what we did about a year ago was we looked at the market and looked at the portfolio of what products that we've been developing in our roadmap. And we said, this is an interesting opportunity for the company to rebrand and, and look at ourselves differently as, as this image shows. And so what we did is we we created the converged data platform and put into that all of our solutions and all of our enterprise grade services that we've always provided. You know, Hadoop and open source is still very important to us, but that's that's not the only thing. Uh, and really, it's, we have a huge differ differentiator there with our IP, and we wanted to take advantage of that. So everything today comes back to this graphic. That's your entree point into the converged data platform and our data fabric. But that's where you get access to all of the shared services that MapR provides. What are those shared services? Well, there's a whole bunch. Things like snapshots and mirroring and high availability and support for trillions of files, our, our global namespace, disaster recovery. All of those enterprise-grade features that MapR as a company walking into a, a you know a Fortune 2000 company and saying, we are your converged data platform. You know, we, we're we're going to supply your Hadoop. We're going to supply your data story. We're going to supply your database. Or we're going to supply your streaming. There are services that those folks require and expect. And they, they tend to be those shared services at an enterprise level that, that I just mentioned. We, we provide all of those. So it's really the full gamut from a, from a delivery point of view on, on where you can get these. And the beauty of MapR and the Converged Data Platform is regardless of where you are on that bottom layer, it all looks the same. Uh, everyone has their own definition of real time. And that definition, by and large, is getting to be uh, finer and finer. Real time depends less on what tools you're using to process the data and more where the data is and what's the closest place in which you can process it. So we took our technology and our idea of the data fabric, applied it to streaming and allowed customers to build these uh, global cloud processing fabrics. So this was the early way that we helped customers get to even more real time at global scale using multiple points of presence across multiple clouds uh, using the data fabric. But what we soon realized was there was still a huge gap between where the data was being created and where you actually needed those insights and where those point of presence were being set up. But now if we start thinking about things in terms of edge processing and smaller form factor and more distributed, you start thinking about what's possible if you're actually doing uh, data services and processing inside the car. My topic today is next-gen applications. So these are intelligent business applications that operationalize insights from data. Companies like Uber and Airbnb, they don't own taxis, they don't own uh, hotels, but they have the most market cap. But the question really is, what are they doing? And usually at this point, most people tell you, well, they're using big data, right? And But there's more to it, because all these big data tools are available out in the open source. So what are they doing that's different? And what they're doing that's different is that they are taking analytical insight and instead of sitting in a room every quarter or every month and showing 20 charts about how your business is doing and then having the executive team make a decision, oh, based on these 20 charts of data, I, we think we should run these promotions, we think we should make these pricing changes, we think we should make these additions to our product, the, the classical way of how business is run, they are breaking it, right? And they're saying, no, we're gonna do thousands of micro decisions, millions of them uh, a month, and all of them are being done automatically based on analytics that's coming in real time or near, near real time. And it's gonna be connected with our operational applications, right? So the wall, if you will, between uh, 
between analytics and operations is being busted.